Hey everyone, today I'm gonna teach you how to make gok cha bao. This is steamed jing cha bao, gok cha bao. Hey everyone, today I'm gonna show you how to make gok cha bao, which in English is big roast pork bun. And you always know I love sharing tips, so I'm gonna give you three big tips on how you can make the best baked cha siu bao in your own home. So let's get going. to making cha siu baos. First, we have to make the tong jong. Tong jong is a water roux, and it is used to give the dough a softer texture, as well as extend the shelf life just a little bit longer. Step number two is to make the cha siu bao filling, and an awesome filling is a key part of making a very good cha siu bao. And number three, I'm gonna show you how to make the dough. It is very similar to my bolo bao dough, my pineapple bun dough, except that this isn't really a milk type bread, it's more of a salty type bread. All right, so there's a lot to do, so let's make the tong jong first. Okay, so in this pot, I have my heat turned off. I'm going to add a tablespoon of all-purpose flour, followed by 70 milliliters of plain water. And before I do anything else, I'm going to just mash up the flour to take out the lumps. So you want to make sure that you smooth out all the flour lumps before you turn on the heat. So I'm gonna turn my heat on to a low to medium heat. And I'm gonna cook this until it thickens up to a very thick paste and while i'm cooking this i'm also going to stir it around so that i'm making sure that it doesn't burn or rather overcook depending on how high you have heat on uh, this whole process should take about two to maybe four minutes if you see a lot of steam coming up just take your pan off the heat and just let it cool down a little bit and just continue stirring as you can see it's starting to thicken up but we got to make it more thick so i'm going to continue cooking this and stirring it Okay, I'm gonna switch up the heat, and this is how it looks. As you can see, it turned into a really soft, uh, paste-like consistency. It looks like that. All right, and this is your tong jong, and this will make your bread a lot more tastier. And just let it cool down, because you don't want to add this into your bread mixture when it's still warm. So, so since I did this first, there's gonna be plenty of time for this to cool down. And now I'm gonna add some plastic wrap right on top of the tong jong so that a skin won't form and just let it cool down. Okay, so now it's time to make the cha siu bao filling. Now this is store-bought cha siu, but for me, buying good quality cha siu in Thailand is a lot cheaper than making it at home. But I will make a cha siu video to show everybody just for fun really soon. Now right here is 150 grams of cha siu. Now I mentioned that I have three tips for making the best cha siu bao. The first tip is to get cha siu that is bun fei, bun sao. Now, bun fei, bun sao is a Cantonese word. In English, it means half lean and half fat. Now, obviously, the guy cutting up your cha siu at a, at a Chinese restaurant is not gonna dig out a perfectly 50-50 of lean and fat. Actually, it's gonna be a 60-70% lean and then the rest is gonna be fat. So that's my first tip. Make sure you have enough fat inside your roast pork, all right? And I prefer slicing it up rather than making it cubed and just cut it down to about this size. Some smaller and some slightly larger like that, but but uh, no bigger, but no bigger than that one, okay? And then I need 50 grams of onion and I just need to dice up the onion. All right, and that's it. Just about that size. Okay, so now that that's done, I need to make the sauce. Okay, so now my second biggest tip for making cha siu bao is to don't make the sauce for your cha siu bao filling too thick. The reason why is you want to make it just a little bit more runny because you want to have a little bit more liquid uh, in your cha siu bao filling because when this roast pork filling is sealed inside the dough, it's going to steam up and the sauces will melt into the surrounding dough. So you're going to get an extra special juicy cha siu bao. Okay, now the ingredients for the sauce, I need two teaspoons of sugar. And here's two teaspoons of oyster sauce. That's like one, and that's two. This is half a teaspoon of dark soy sauce. Okay. This is a quarter teaspoon of pure sesame oil. And there's a tablespoon of light soy sauce. Dash of ground white pepper, about a quarter teaspoon. And then we're gonna mix this up and just set it aside. 
And now we also need a thickener for the sauce. So this is a tablespoon of potato starch and I'm gonna mix it with three tablespoons of water. This is what's gonna help thicken up the sauce for our filling. That's about three tablespoons and just mix it up first. Now I just wanna say ahead of time that I'm not gonna be using all of this. I'm gonna eyeball the thickness. Like I mentioned before, the number two tip for the sauce is you don't want it too thick. You want it just a little bit slightly runny because you want more liquid inside your bun. Just mix it up really well and then I'm gonna set these aside because it's time to get start cooking. All right, so I'm gonna set my pan here and I'm just gonna put it on a medium heat. I'm gonna add about two tablespoons of oil. And when the oil gets hot, I'm gonna put in my onions first. And you want to cook the onions just until it starts to become clear, which is now. And then I throw in my roast pork. And you want your roast pork to intermingle with the onion flavor as well as the onion to intermingle with the roast pork flavor and then everybody gets happy. This part doesn't take long, just about 30 seconds, okay? And then I'm gonna switch the heat down to a low medium and just spread out your mix on the pan because you want to add enough water just to cover the entire mixture. All right, so that's covered. And then the sauce, just mix it up again and then throw it in and just give it a stir. Okay, and then when you see that the water is boiling like this, simmering like this, it's time to start adding your slurry. This has to be hot in order for it to really break down and thicken up your sauces. And I also mentioned that I'm not gonna use all of it first. I'm just gonna put in about a tablespoon first. Drizzle it in, then stir it up. Let the potato starch do its work a little bit. I can see that the chasu bao filling is starting to thicken up just slightly. So I'm gonna throw in another tablespoon. Now I'm just gonna cook this down for a minute before I decide uh, whether or not if I'm gonna add uh, any more slurry. Because as I said, I don't want my sauce to be too thick. Okay, it's been about a minute. I want it to be just a little bit more thick. So I'm just gonna add half a tablespoon. And that should be it. Okay, and that's it. Switch off the heat. Here's my roast pork filling. Check it out. Yeah, that's an awesome sauce. And when it cools down, it's gonna thicken up just a little bit more. So eventually when this gets cool enough, I'm also going to put it into the fridge because when this is cold, it will be a lot easier to fill your cha siu bao dough. Now this cha siu bao recipe makes only eight buns. The filling I made here is enough to make 16 barbecue buns. For these cha siu bao fillings, it's just easier to make more than less. What I recommend is save half, right? Because I'm also going to show you how to make jing cha siu bao, which is steamed roast pork buns. So you can use the same filling for that, or you can just put this over rice because who's gonna know except, you know, you and I, right? So just do it. Okay, so now it's time to make the bread dough. Now I know that for many of you, making bread can be very intimidating, especially if this is your very first time because the ambient temperature around you can affect the dough or you don't know how long to knead the bread. And as I mentioned, I'm only making eight buns, which is why I can hand mix and knead the dough with my own bare hands. So at home, I'm gonna show you one really cool technique on how to know if your bread dough is ready or not. So the chatsu balls will come out perfectly. Okay, so the first ingredient that I need is 300 grams of bread flour. All right, so that's 300. And I need 20 grams of milk powder. This is 20 grams of cake flour. This is 45 grams of sugar. This is seven grams of salt. And I'm gonna put the salt on one side. And this is seven grams of instant yeast, which I'm going to put on the opposite side, away from the salt. And this is one large egg, which is at room temperature. And finally, I'm going to add in my cool down tong zhong. Okay, now before I mix this, there are just a few more ingredients that I have to show you, which I'm gonna add later on to my, to my dough. Set aside 40 grams of unsalted butter, as well as 70 milliliters of room temperature water. It's because now it's time to get our hands dirty. Just get in there, be gentle at first so that you don't splash all your ingredients out of the bowl. As always, I'm going to provide you with some visual cues to guide you along the way. You want to combine all these ingredients into a large clump. So you want to put a little bit of pressure by squeezing this dough together. One time I was teaching a friend how to make this bread dough and she was like squeezing it like this, like she's, like she's giving a hamster a massage. Listen, you gotta get in there and you gotta put in some pressure. 
within a few minutes, you notice that it's very, very dry. And that's where we go in with just half of the water, okay? Just put in a little bit. And then we go in. And then we incorporate the water into the bread dough. It's gonna be very tough to put your hands in. It's giving some resistance. Okay, so you see it's starting to form right now. It looks like that. So we add in the rest of the water. And then we go in again. And because I added the water, it's gonna be really, really sticky. Okay, so far I've been mixing it for about three to four minutes. So to tell you something, this dough should not look like this at this point. It's still too wet. It's still too sticky. So what happened? Well, for one thing, it's really humid right now. I'm in Thailand, so it's a humid country. So, so to solve this problem, I'm going to add a tablespoon of flour. I'm gonna mix this in. If you can see, there's a noticeable difference. The dough is, has become a lot more cooperative. So at home, remember, okay? If you're doing what I'm doing for, for about three to four minutes and your dough doesn't look like this, just add half a tablespoon of bread flour and it'll take care of that problem. So now that my dough has become a lot more cooperative, it's time to add the 40 grams of room temperature butter. Okay, so now as you can see, it looks like a pretty good piece of dough. It's not finished yet, of course. I'm gonna work my dough on my countertop, so I'm, gonna add, so I'm just gonna add some flour on my countertop, just lightly, spread out the flour. All right. Now at this point, you want to knead your flour for at least for up to 10 minutes. Could be less, it could be less, it could be more, but it's up to the temperature around you. And of course, if you're using a stand mixer, this will be a lot, this will be a lot quicker. That's just the way baking is. It's also good to have one of these little bench scrapers just in case you need help. And it will stick to the table at first a lot, but don't worry about it. Eventually, it's gonna get into a nice little workable dough ball. Just pull it back and push it forward, pull it back and push it forward. There are a lot of ways to knead bread. And I think just do what is easiest for you Today is actually extra humid for me, so I'm just gonna add just a little bit more flour. You don't wanna add too much flour because it's gonna throw off the recipe. So I'm gonna add just a touch. That's about a teaspoon. So I'm kinda glad that you're watching this because this way you see ways to fix problems. I've noticed that people, they kinda give up too fast when they see that it's not coming out the way they see it on, on TV or somebody else doing a demonstration. So I can totally understand. So I'm glad that you're seeing that I'm having problem with this dough. It's always easy to do a show inside a studio because it's always air conditioned. So my kitchen is not air conditioned. So I gotta sweat and solve my dough problem. Okay, so I'm checking my timer and I'm at the eight minute mark. So I'm actually behind on time. I usually can do this in about 10 minutes, but today is just really humid which is why it's taking a little bit longer. But as you can see, it's sort of, it looks like a dough now. And once in a while, you just gotta, once in a while, you just gotta thump it around. You gotta show his boss. So how do you know you're, all right, so now that I see that my dough is getting there, I'm gonna show you something that I learned behind the back alley of a very famous French bakery. This test is called the stretchy McStretch test. It's a fancy French term. So what I'm gonna show you, I'm just gonna peel a piece off and then, oh, this is too big. I'm just gonna flatten it, make it into a square and I'm gonna stretch it out. And as you can, as you can see, it, tear, it tears very easily, right? I'm a, my fingers are about two inches apart and it's torn already. So I'm gonna do this again in maybe about three minutes. And then I'm gonna do my stretchy McStretch test again to show you that it can't be broken that part easily. And that's when you know your bread dough is ready. Now I know everybody watching this is probably saying, wow, Wally, you must get really, really good back rubs. My answer is yes, I do. Just ask my wife. I'll do Christmas parties, bar mitzvahs, you name it. Just send them Bitcoins.
and I'll be right over. Okay, so time to do another stretchy McStretch test. Stretch out your thumbs and then, okay, and then we pull. Okay, look, check that out. Even at this length, it's still not stretching. Look, and now it tears up. Okay, so it's not far, it's fine, all right? Before it tore up really fast, but this is okay. But I'm gonna need this just for about another two minutes. You don't want to knead it too much because there is such a thing as over kneading. At this point, the dough is not sticky at all. Outside looks smooth, so that's a sign that you're on the right path. Okay, I'm finished. I'm just gonna do one last stretchy McStretch test. I don't need to do it. I just like saying stretchy McStretch. Take out a piece of dough, make it as thin as you can, and just pull and see how far, and see how long it takes for it to tear. See, it's not tearing, not tearing, still going. Still going until boom. Okay, this is good. This is ready. I'm just gonna tuck underneath, tuck underneath, fold. You see, you see what I'm doing? I'm just pushing it under, around and around and around until it forms a nice little ball. All right? Just pop it out and I'm gonna wrap this up and just let this rest for 15 minutes. Okay, so 15 minutes has passed. So punch out the air and then knead it for just five minutes. Just reform it into a dome shape. Just pop it in the center. So we're gonna cover up this bread dough and let it proof until it doubles in size. Now how fast this happens depends on where you live. For me, it's gonna take about 45 minutes for this to double in size. For you, it could take about one hour to one and a half to even two hours. It depends on the temperature inside your kitchen. But if your kitchen is very cold, then all you have to do is just put this inside your oven and stick in like maybe one cup or two cup of hot water and it should work just fine. So I'm gonna leave it in my kitchen, cover it with a damp towel and I'll be back in about 45 minutes. All right, so for me, it's been about an hour and my bread dough has risen, it's doubled in size, so it's ready to be worked with. You can put your finger in and if there's still an indentation, you know it's just right. So right now I have to punch out the air. This is a very important step also, because if you don't punch out the air, it's gonna be very hard to roll it. I'm just gonna lightly dust my work surface with some bread flour and just continue punching out the air pockets. So I'll be making eight pork buns and each dough bun is gonna be about 75 grams. So just get your handy scale and weigh and weigh out your dough. This one's 70, this one's 72 grams, so now it's 75. This one's ready. Okay, so I have eight individual buns here, so I'm gonna start rolling it out. I'm gonna flour my work surface as well as a rolling pin. Just roll it into a ball and flatten it into a disc and start rolling. Okay, so right here I have a tablespoon and a half of cha siu filling. And as you can see, it's not a round shape. No problem, don't worry about it. What you don't want to happen is have this stuff leaking out all over the outside because it'll be too hard for you to wrap it up. So we just take one end, put it, push it over, and one end, connect the other end, and just take the other fold and just put it on top and just squeeze, just pinch it in, just pinch in the ends like that, okay? And there you go, a cha siu bao. And now I'm just going to just sort of move it around the bottom, just pinch it. The dough should not be easy to puncture at all. And then you just want to use your hand, form it into a cup, and just sort of just move it around like that, shift it around, just to give it a good seal. Okay, and there you go, a cha siu bao. And just put it onto a tray lined with baking paper. All right, time to do the next one. Just roll it into a ball. Lightly dust your rolling pin, just roll it up. Okay, roll out the next piece of dough, and just do the same about a tablespoon to a tablespoon and a half of your cha siu filling. Pick up the ends and just tuck it in, tuck it in. And then just pinch, there you go. At this point, you don't have to be, you don't have to, you don't have to worry too much about ripping your dough because your, your dough is actually quite sturdy at this point. All right, just pinch it in. Okay, and just pinch it in. And there you go, your cha siu bao. Just, push the, just put a little pressure on the sides to help squish it up. And use your fingers, cup it up, and just jiggle the bottom a little bit and you get a nice seal on the bottom of your bun, okay? All right, so now these are ready. I'm just gonna cover it up with some plastic wrap and just let it sit here and proof for 30 minutes. Okay, so it's been about 30 minutes and my 
And I'm done with my final proofing. So now I have to put on an egg wash. I already preheated my oven to 375 degrees Fahrenheit. And brush on a liberal amount of egg wash over your buns. Check that out. Don't they look good? And that one there is the ugly duckling. But oh well. What am I going to do, right? Still going to eat it. It's still going to come out good. Okay, so now my final tip on how you can make the best char siu bowls at home is right here. As you can see, my char siu bowls are bunched up together. The, the most important thing about making char siu bowls is that you can't overcook it. Char siu bowls are the best when they're slightly undercooked. So that dough is very tender, it's very soft, very moist. And the way to, to protect it from overcooking is that you got to bunch up your char siu bowls together. This is a trick that I learned from my favorite restaurant, Hapshing, back in New York City. Their trays are full of chasu baos that are bunched up together. And there's actually a good reason for that. When you have your chasu baos bunched up together, it has sort of a buffer uh, to protect it from overcooking. So when you're making chasu baos at home, right, bunch them up together, right? Just bunch them up, and you're gonna see that your chasu baos are very, very soft, moist, and tender. All right, so I'm gonna pop these into my oven. I'm gonna put it on the top rack so that so it'll get nice and brown on the top. And I'm gonna bake this for about 10 to 12 minutes. All right, so it's been about 12 minutes. Time to take out my buns. No, as you can see, yeah, one of my buns have leaked out, but no problems, no worries. Now I've got some sugar water here. Uh, it's basically a mixture of honey and sugar. So what you want to do is you just want to immediately brush it on top of your chasu baos. This will give this a nice little sweet glaze on top of your buns. Okay everyone, so here's my harshest critic. This is my daughter, Alice. She's gonna try my chasu bows and see what's up to her standards. Okay, Alice, take one bow out. I'm just gonna tear it open and just look how juicy that bow is. Check that out. And this smells so good. Come out. Mmm, it's so soft and it's so soft and it's so moist. And I'll give some to my little girl and see what she thinks. Come on. All right. Wanna try it? Okay. You wanna try it? Yeah. <laughs> How is it, Alice? Is it good? I think she likes it. I definitely like it. I'm gonna give it a big bite. Mmm. Mmm. It is really good. Mmm. It reminds me a lot of the hopjing tasu baos. The bun is nice and soft. It is slightly, just slightly undercooked. And the juices have melded in with the bread. It's got some saltiness from the cha siu and a nice sweet glaze on top. It's just a really nice touch. Want some more, Alice? Want some more? Yeah. All right, everyone, Alice and I thank you very much for watching. If you're watching me for the very first time, do remember to subscribe. I make videos about once every week or so. So I hope to see you all again next time. Take care and goodbye. Bye. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.